Hi, I'm Eleanor Morse, and um, Marguerite's Harbor is the title of my book. Marguerite's Harbor is set in mid-coast Maine uh, between the years of 1955 and 1968, and um, it's about a family. Um, there's six point of view characters, um, family in three generations living uh, under one roof. The book starts with a kitchen fire that was set um, unintentionally by the grandmother, and she's living alone at the time, and her rest of the family is in Michigan, and they realize that she can't um, live alone any longer. She has incipient um, dementia, and she refuses to leave her house, and they don't want to uh, they don't want to pull her out of the house um, against her will. And so the whole family moves into the farmhouse with her. It's set during a very uh, tempestuous time in this country, especially um, in the late 60s. I wanted to make that an important part of the book as well. It's um, the time of, of this country, the timing of this, of the political events in this country is, is really part of the book, a strong part of the book too. Books start in different ways. Sometimes um, a book might start with a image or a very strong character. This book, if I can remember back to the point where it started, um, I think really began with an idea in terms of um, the government in relation to its citizenry during the Vietnam War telling more and more lies, um, where so the truth became something that was really up for grabs. I was interested in how those years were a precursor to what we were experiencing more recently. I think people feel that writers plan out books and write outlines and know exactly what's gonna happen. And that's never really been the case for me as a writer. People write in different ways, and there's no right and wrong way to do it. But uh, for me, as a writer, I do I do think ahead, but I don't plan what a character is going to do when I start a book, and I don't plan out the story of a book. Um, I have to get to know my characters before I really know where a book is going. When I was learning to sing, um, and I'm not a great singer, but I had a feeling of what I wanted my voice to sound like. And there was a gap between my image of what my voice would sound like and what actually came out of my mouth. And that's true with every book really, that I have an image of complexity and, and the feeling and emotion of a book. And I might be able to get close to that, but there's always a gap between what I can imagine and, and what actually comes out on the page. Well, every book has its own personality and its own being. Um, this book had a character, um, the grandmother, Marguerite, who <clears throat> was intended to be a minor character and she shoved her way right to the center of the book. Um, she, she's the person with, uh, with dementia, but she's a, a very strong character and an interest turned out to be a very interesting character to me and I had never had that experience quite the same with other books where a character just elbows his or her way so forcefully into a into the center. I think many people don't understand when I say I didn't expect that character to do that and didn't want them to do that and it's like, well, what are you talking about? You know, you're the you're the person that wrote it. You're in charge. But really, um, my favorite kind of writing is where I'm not in charge, where I'm feeling from characters and from something beyond those characters. I don't always know when a story has reached its conclusion. Um, the book before this book, uh, I had I had a friend who's a writer, tell me that I'd finished the book. <laughs> and I really could have gone on for quite a number more pages before I'd realized that. Um, but this book had a fairly natural ending. I, I, still, I still 
care about these characters and still think about them sometimes. I was on a panel once with, with some other writers and the question came, when you finish a book, do your characters still stay with you? And one novelist said, absolutely not. When I finish a book, I slam the door and that's the last I think about them, but they are in my mind and characters from other books are, are still with me not every day in the way that a character is when I'm in the midst of writing, but, but they, they do stay. But with this book, they, they kind of told me it was their stories for now were finished. The landscape of Maine has made a big difference to my writing. The setting of my books are important to me and uh, it's important to me to have described Maine and its beauty and its ruggedness and its changeability in all sorts of ways. It's affected me as a writer and um, made me probably feel the natural world more deeply than I would if I, if I lived somewhere else. I really have a hard time remembering a time when I wasn't a writer. I just celebrated my 76th birthday um, and I probably began writing around age five or six. I've always loved to read and I, I read quite early. Um, so that's, that's about 70 years of writing. My mother was a really good writer and really was my first teacher. My father wasn't a writer. Um, he was a terrible speller, but he, was a, he believed in, in the power of words and he meant what he said. And, um, and so for both of them in different ways, words were important aspects of their lives. There used to be a woman living in, in my neighborhood named Maria. Uh, she's no longer alive, but she was quite opinionated and forceful. And um, she, I guess she, we were standing out in front of my house and she must've asked me about my writing one day. And she said, she asked how it was going. And I said, oh, you know, so so and she moved into her opinionated place and she said get back in there meaning get back in your house close the door don't open the door don't answer the phone think and then she turned around and sort of stomped off down the road and actually that was one of the best pieces of advice I ever had because you do have to um just be and think and imagine and um, dream. When I was a young mother with young kids, I learned quite a lot during those years and felt desperate at times, not having time and space to write. But I did realize that nobody's going to make that time for me, that I have to be somewhat ferocious about it. And um, not somewhat ferocious, sometimes I have to be very ferocious to just make that time and space. But I would say to people who, who have young kids or who for some reason don't have the space and time in their lives to write that, um, that no, no piece of our living is wasted on us as writers. And um, Stanley Kunitz said, it's templated, tempting to think that, that life is the enemy of of writing, but it's really not. Uh, we have to carve out our own space and time. Uh, but every single day that we live life, we learn something. None of it's wasted. Even if you don't write for several years, you come back and you're, you have a greater maturity as a writer. I have a cat who's just moving into the picture. <laughs> What's your cat's Oscar. name? This is Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. He's oh. well. Here he is. <laughs> Maybe he'd like to appear in uh, MWPA circles. 